I'm tired, I'm grumpy, it's like 90 degrees in here and the air conditioning's not working at the moment. I've had better days. But you know what? We've got some drama to discuss, so let's get into it. I promised you if you subscribed there'd be more of me in a robe, so here we are. It's late at night, let's get into some of the interesting topics. So first of all, for over a week now, people have been up in arms about this new Le Zelda and Loftwing amiibo situation with Nintendo and uh, the new Skyward Sword remake coming to Nintendo Switch in, I guess it's July or June. Um, there's a lot to be said about this, and comments range wildly from one side to the other. Of course, you've got the Nintendo fanboys that don't have any problem with this and will defend it to the ends of the earth. And then you've got some pretty logical, reasonable people that say Nintendo should not be locking serious quality of life improvements to a game behind an amiibo that is arguably, arguably, and as we have seen, uh, already becoming hard to get. Now, we can only hope that Nintendo is going to create uh, enough copies of this amiibo to satisfy everybody, but we can already see it now. Pre-orders are selling out all over the place, and, uh, you know, people are already spending 50 60 $70 to secure one of these amiibos, which is more, in some cases, than even the cost of the game that it goes with, which is kind of crazy. Uh, here's my perspective on it all. Uh, I'm okay with Nintendo putting... Uh, real functionality behind Amiibos. To be honest, I don't really buy Amiibos unless I have some reason-like functionality, uh, you know, in order to unlock something. So I don't really mind that, but the fact that Nintendo price-gated this as one of the most expensive Amiibos ever at $25 US, that's going to be almost $40 Canadian, really, there's got to be a better solution out there. Uh, I think Nintendo really needs to rise to the occasion and do something to ensure that this is not going to piss everybody off permanently. Uh, you know, we're coming into E3 now, expectations are really high, and I think Nintendo's hoping that a lot of this is just going to get swept underneath the rug, and you know what, it probably will. People are going to forget about this, people are going to move on. See, the thing is, with this particular amiibo and this particular functionality that gives you this fast travel ability to go from the sky to the earth, even from a dungeon, uh, kind of quick travel, get some equipment or materials that you need and come right back, that's a great functionality, but it was not part of the original game. And the thing that a lot of people that are really upset about this need to remember is that they can still buy the game. And they can still enjoy it as it was originally intended with improved graphics and everything else that Nintendo's going to offer in this game without the Amiibo. The Amiibo is a luxury. Yes, it's a quality of life enhancement that probably should have been there anyway. A lot of people are even calling it a cheat because it makes things too easy. But having played the game, you know what? There are save points where you can do this exact same functionality littered all over the map in that game. It is not hard to find a spot to teleport or get up into the sky. So, you know, I'm of two minds on this whole thing. <clears throat> on the one hand, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Uh, it's not going to change my mind as far as buying the game. I have it pre-ordered and I'm going to buy it. I will probably try to find the Amiibo if I can get it at retail price. But I'm sure as hell not paying scalpers just for the ability to do something a little bit faster than I could do in a minute or two anyway. So, I don't know. What's you guys feeling on this whole Amiibo situation? You know, we've seen Nintendo do this before with other games out there where they have locked, you know, pretty important content behind... Uh, you know, a paywall, essentially. Uh, I don't really have a huge problem with that uh, in general, but I'm not happy with it. I mean, if these Amiibos, maybe if they came out... You know what? If Nintendo came out with some official NFC cards that you could buy for $3.99 or some kind of, uh, you know, DLC for the game on the eShop that you could purchase for $3.99 to give you that ability... Uh, and the Amiibo was just kind of a decoration at that point that would also give you that... Uh, I think I'd be a little more okay with it. Right now, I'm a little bit upset about the situation. Uh, you know, what can be said... Like, 
Every YouTuber out there is talking about this. I think it's being blown way out of proportion, and I'm getting kind of sick of seeing stuff like this get blown so far out of proportion. Nintendo is out there to make money. They are not evil. They are not trying to screw people. They Like, no, they don't really care about you. But yes, they're trying to make money off one of their most valuable properties. Zelda, in a 35th anniversary year window, is a cash cow. And they're going to do everything they possibly can to make every scrip and scrap of money that they can along the way this year off every Zelda property possible. And I don't necessarily blame them. I don't expect things for free. But I do th expect things to be reasonable. So do I think Nintendo needs to come out with some kind of an announcement that is going to say, yes, we'll allow this to be a digital DLC that you can purchase for a reasonable price, two, three, five dollars, or some kind of amiibo card that you can buy in replacement for the amiibo, which is now already rare and already being scalped? Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into the next topic, and that is the recent news uh, actually coming out of Modern Vintage Gamer about uh, the Xbox DRM situation. Now, we saw... Uh, several weeks ago, the C-bomb situation emerged on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 3, where people were noticing that uh, just by removing the uh, CMOS battery from their uh, consoles, they were finding that they could no longer play their games because the console needed to reach out to Sony servers and have some kind of a two-way conversation to confirm the date and time, uh, you know... It, We've pretty much seen that Sony is going to do, we think Sony is going to do something about that on their end, but Modern Vintage Gamer actually uncovered a new problem with DRM where if you are not connected to the Xbox servers, even with games that you physically own, if you have downloaded those games uh, to your system, especially with the new Xbox Series X, in a lot of cases, these games are not playable without an internet connection, which of course begs the question down the road when the servers shut down, what's going to happen to all these games? Now, again, I think this is another situation that people are blowing way out of proportion, especially with Xbox. Microsoft has a huge commitment going forward, and they have since day one, to maintaining their old IPs, to bringing them forward to new consoles. We saw original Xbox games on the Xbox 360. We see 360 games on the Xbox One. We see Xbox One and 360 games on the Xbox Series X, and on and on. And I do believe and trust that Microsoft is going to continue to carry their most valuable properties forward from console to console. However, this does mean, if Microsoft does not address this problem, that someday your Xbox Series X or your Xbox One X or S is going to be a brick. And that is unfortunate for a lot of collectors, a lot of retro gamers. You know, a lot of people would like to know that, as we could with older platforms, that right now, today, I can turn on my PS2 right over there, pop in a disc and play it any time I want. It doesn't need to talk to any server. It doesn't need to confirm anything. It doesn't matter if the clock dies. The clock is dead in my Dreamcast right now. It still plays anytime, anywhere. I just have to set the clock every time before I can play. No big deal. But with these newer systems that are so heavily reliant on the internet, and there was quite a commotion about this when the Xbox One launched, when they launched and saying that you were going to have to be online at all times, and people really had a backlash to that at the time, but that was six or seven years ago, and now this has pretty much snuck into all of the modern consoles. The PS5 is no exception. The Xbox Series X, we're seeing that games are not playable without an internet connection. So what do you guys think? Like, what are we going to do going forward, and what can we expect from Microsoft and Sony going forward in terms of supporting these older consoles as they age out of relevance. So in 2025, will we still be playing Xbox Ones? Are the, maybe not 2025, maybe 2027, 2028? At some point, those Xbox Ones are going to become bricks. And what do we think about that? Are we okay with the fact that most of those games will have been carried forward to newer platforms? Do you expect that you're going to have a newer platform by that time? Or are you really legitimately upset that at some point your investment is going to be a brick? Let me know in the comments, guys, because 
I don't know what to say about some of this stuff. People get really riled up about this stuff on the internet. You see the big channels just spouting this stuff and comments galore on Twitter and Instagram. People are, as usual, polarized on one side or the other. They're angry. And uh, I don't like to be angry, but sometimes I just got to come in, pop on the robe, and have a little bit of a rant. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.